how's it going folks? Thought I'd just bring you along and show you how we're dealing with the falling pH in the aquaculture system behind me here. Uh, the same sort of principles are also used in the aquaponics, but I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, the pH falling. Well, I'm actually really happy it is falling because it means that we've got the bacteria well and truly colonizing the moving bed biofilter. Uh, what it means is the bacteria are reproducing, going through their life cycle, then dying. They're also producing waste. The dead bacteria and the waste are decomposing and that tends to acidify the water, bringing the pH down. In aquaponics, uh, the sweet spots round about, depending on who you speak to, the sweet spots round about 6.3, anywhere from there, up to round about 7. In that zone there is where most uh, nutrients will be available for the plants, um, so people like to keep it in that zone there. We've got no plants with the aquaponics, aquaponics with the aquaculture system, so I'm not really worried about having a low pH. In fact, the J-Perch prefer the higher pH above the 7, so ultimately I'd like the pH in the aquaculture system to be above 7. What we use in the aquaponics is calcium hydroxide and potassium bicarbonate. Both of those two are very strong base substances. So I know pretty much all a heap tablespoon will give me about a um, 0.3 kick in the aquaponics with the calcium hydroxide and with the potassium bicarbonate a little bit less. With the aquaponics, it's also a good thing to add those two uh, to help uh, bring up your pH, mainly because they um, put potassium in the system and also calcium. They're two elements that are actually lacking in the fish food. Basically the, pan the plants are growing on what the fish don't assimilate in their bodies. So yeah, it's good to add those things in. Bit of a double kick, brings your pH up and makes, you know, those elements available for your plants. With the aquaculture though, it's not needed at all. We're just looking at bringing the pH up. We're not after extra potassium. Um, carbonates are good because it helps uh, keep the alkalinity up in the water, but not the calcium as such. So I've decided against using the calcium hydroxide, mainly because I had it down to around about 6.3 the other day, and I added only in about a teaspoonful. And what I noticed was the water I was adding it in the radial flow filter by the way, and I tested it over at the sump, the drum at the back there, and the water was actually coming in at 8.5, so I was having a jump from 6.3 all the way up to 8.5 by the time it hit the sump. And one thing I don't want to do is kill off my bacteria. They're the things that are cycling the nitrogen, or well, the ammonia into nitrite, nitrite into nitrate. So I'm really looking at keeping the bacteria healthy as well as the fish just to keep this system running smoothly. So I've decided to go another route. Um, it's a path I've used before. It's using shell grip. So basically um, calcium carbonate. Um, you can use oyster shell or the shell grip we're using is purchased for the chickens. We add it to their feed just so they can get some else extra calcium. The way I've been using the shell grip is just by adding it into a paint strainer bag. Actually, I'll take you over there now and give you a bit of a look, hey? So with the system, what we've got is uh, water coming out from the radial flow filter and going into the moving bed biofilter. And I also have a little tap there. So what I've done is I've opened that tap up and the water is some water, not a lot, some water is bypassing the moving bed biofilter coming down around here and into the sump tank where I've set up the little bag. So this is the little bag setup that I've made. It's just a paint strainer bag with some shell grit in the base, a couple of zip ties just to hold it to a hole that I've drilled through the barrel. You've got the inflow from the pipe I just showed you and that's running through this bag of shell grit and I'll just zoom in and show you what it's doing. And you can see there that the water's disturbing the shell grit and flowing through into the sump tank itself. So what's happening is the acidic water is basically breaking down the shell grit, uh, raising the pH. When this bag went in the other day, I did a reading and the pH was sitting around about 6.5. And over the next couple of days, it was coming up about 0.1 per day to a point where it's pretty much well leveled off at seven, which I'm really chuffed with. Uh, that's a great place for it to stick. So we'll go actually go around and just do another reading. I haven't done a reading this afternoon. So I'll just turn the pH pen on and got a new probe for it. Woohoo! Just pop them in there and we'll have a look. We'll zoom in. And we're sitting at, move the camera a bit, seven. 
It's sitting at a pH of 7. There we go. So that's exactly where I want it. So all it took was about three or four days to get it up to the nice healthy range and I haven't had any problems at all. The ammonia and the nitrite, um, the ammonia is sitting at 0.25, has for the last couple of days. The nitrite's falling slowly still, so I know the bacteria are happy. So, so there you go. There's just a bit of a look at how I've managed to balance out the pH in the aquaculture system here. I think it will definitely be my preferred method for this system and also the new aquaponics system that's going where I'm sitting right here, or the fish tanks. Um, the, one of the things that I have read on a couple of forums is some people don't like using it because when the acid breaks down the shell grit it releases a lot of carbonates into the water. Um, carbonate alkalinity can be a problem if you're trying to bring your pH down for whatever reason it goes up too hard and you want to bring it down. It can make it a little bit fiddly trying to bring it down so some people suggest not to use it. Um, with the aquaculture system I don't have a problem at all. With the aquaponics um, I don't think it'll pose a big problem either. The way it's been <laughs> set up in this drum which was a little bit sort of ad hoc but it looks like it's working so I'm not you know why bother changing it. Um, that little bag if I find the the pH is coming up too far I can just swing it over the over the side at the back here. Actually, I'll do it now to show you. I can just swing it like that, put the lid back on, and you know it doesn't sit tightly, it doesn't have to. But it's out of the flow of the water and the pH won't be adjusted anymore, um, it won't be brought up anymore. So it's as easy as that. I'll just pop it back in. With the aquaponic system, I'm going to do something similar. I'll, I'll have the, the the bag of grit. Um, or it might be a larger canister directly underneath one of the inflows from the beds into the sump. Um, yeah, just to try and keep the pH up. If there's a problem and the pH keeps coming up uh, too far, I'll just remove the canister or the bag. I really don't think it's going to be a big issue though. So, so there you go. Pretty much we'll leave it there. If you've got any comments, questions or suggestions on this or any of the other aquaponics or aquaculture clips, um, pop them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you. I'll still go back and check the old clips out. And I'll call it quits there. Kira's got a spelling test and we're late for jujitsu. So have a great one, guys. Cheers.